welcome everyone to Paco Sanchez Park. Welcome everyone to Paco Sanchez Park. <laughs> All right. That's right. This is a, fest a festive occasion. My name is Happy Haynes, and I'm very proud to be the executive director of Denver Parks and Recreation and a great team uh, that working alongside with the community and with Councilman Lopez and so many others uh, are have have created this dream that we're about to celebrate uh, today. I, I, and I, I'm delighted to be able to welcome today uh, among many others and we'll, we'll get we'll hear from some of these folks in a few minutes. Our mayor Michael B. Hancock is here. Uh, Councilman Paul Lopez is here. And uh, the most famous of us all, Miss Nettie Moore, is here. You'll hear from these folks in just a moment. I want to acknowledge the two uh, deputy executive directors, uh, Scott Gilmore, uh, who couldn't be here today. He's lying flat on his back with a back problem. So we're all sending his best wishes to him, right? Um, and uh, to John Martinez, where are you, John? Uh, who is uh, over recreation. And uh, I, you know, couldn't be prouder to work with these guys, um, who uh, uh, are such great partners. And and you know, you, it's hard to know where parks leaves off and recreation begins, and vice versa. And that's exactly the kind of department that you want to see. Uh, and I'm going to introduce a few other members of our team a little a little later. I would also like to welcome our guests from Girls Inc. who are here. <laughs> woo -hoo, woo -hoo. In fact. Would you guys come up and stand with me? Thank you. And we, do we have a group from uh, Dream, the Dream Center here as well? Yeah, please. Come on up and, and, and join us up here. So do they look excited? This is, this is, this is all uh, about them, right? Um, our, our youngsters. So what is your favorite thing to do when you come to the park? And play. She likes to play. That's a good thing to do to a park. How about you? Um, play. My favorite thing to do at the park is to um, have fun and enjoy the park. She likes to have fun and enjoy the park. And that indeed is why we are all here today. So thank you all for being here um, because as you know, we're, this is about them. Uh, and their futures and about celebrating people like Nettie who have been working hard all these years to make sure that this park served this community. Um, Reimagine Play has been many years in the making and as a department our vision has been to create and to build a playground that brings together all the best elements of play, of adventure and innovation for it says people here, but kids of all ages. That's all of us, all of us. And as we were looking for the best place to build this dream playground, Councilman Lopez stepped forward and said, West Side, we need a park right here, a park in, on the West Side. And our, our staff, our planning staff, did their due diligence and indeed realized that Paco Sanchez Park was the perfect location for this dream design. And so we're so happy to be here today. This park has older playground equipment that is in need of replacement. That's one of the things that drew us here. At nearly 30 acres, it's big enough for a play structure of this size that you see in the, in the uh, diagrams here. The park is accessible. I've talked to some of the neighbors here who consider this their park. You can walk here, you can drive here, you can bike here, and you can take light rail to this park. Uh, and so it is the perfect lo uh, location. Rudy Rec Center is just down the street from here. It gives our department uh, an opportunity to integrate, as, we, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, to integrate recreation programs and activities into the park. And finally, and most importantly, this is an area of the city where childhood obesity rates have become a growing concern. <laughs> and as leaders in this city and in this community, 
we should be doing everything we can to give these kids, to give all of our kids the tools that they need to stay healthy and active and to build a lifetime of healthy, uh, uh, of health and activity. Since bringing this concept to the neighborhood, local residents have really invested and um, put their heart and commitment uh, and soul into this project. So their mark is everywhere on the design that we are demonstrating today. And we want to thank you, community members, for your commitment and for your engagement and the time and effort you have spent helping, helping us to visualize and create a design that will serve you and serve your families. This Paco sign behind us, um, that we, we have uh, the, these uh, youngsters uh, 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 demonstrating for us, it's versatility. Um, it became part of the design because we heard from local residents about the importance of honoring the namesake of this park, Mr. Paco Sanchez, who's who is a legend in our Denver community, and we're so proud that his name is on this park. The full design of Reimagine Play takes advantage of the existing topography of the hills and the rolling and the long open spaces uh, of the site and provides a series of challenges and experiences throughout the park. Today, we're here to celebrate phase one of this project. This is a big project, so we're doing it in phases. This first phase includes the signature play plateau with large custom play pieces that you can see uh, in the uh, design here. Phases two coming, we hope, shortly afterwards, and two and three of this project include a fitness loop, a community plaza, and kiosk building. These phases are not currently funded, but they're part of a proposed list of projects in the uh, general obligation bond uh, that's coming up and that you'll have an opportunity uh, to uh, weigh in on in this November. So stay tuned to that because uh, Paco Sanchez is in that uh, package of proposed projects. So our goal is to build a park that you guys want to come back here for day after day and year after year, and then one of these days to bring your own children right back to this park and say, this is where I came to play when I was a youngster. So I would like to thank our funders. Without your support, we would not be here today, and there are so many great partners. First, uh, the Colorado Health Foundation, and I don't know if, is someone here from the Health Foundation? Uh, they were going to try to send a representative, but we want to thank them. We do have representatives from Great Outdoors Colorado, Chris Castilian, the executive director, and his team. Where are you, Chris? B wave your hand. Uh, uh, thank you so much. They, are, they have been such, both of these organizations have been such great partners with us in, in, in parks and in rec centers throughout this community as well as the next uh, funder, the Gates Family Foundation. Who's here from Gates? Um, we know that they're, they're uh, coming. Uh, um, in fact, Lisa Rucker, where is Lisa? There she is in the back. Thank you, Lisa. And the Walton Family Foundation. Um, and, and Kathy Lund, is Kathy here? Well, we want to say thank you to all of our funders who have partnered with the Department of Parks and Recreation to make this amazing part happen. I would also like to thank our parks planning staff who've really worked diligently. Uh, you talk about a labor of love. Uh, these guys are having so much fun with this park and with the planning for this park. Um, it's hard for them to think that they're actually at work. Um, and so starting with Gordon Robertson, who is Director of Planning, Design and Construction, and uh, his team, Mike Bouchard uh, back here, and Heather Runkle, the uh, project manager. Where's Heather? Thank you. Uh, we, we can't thank you enough for the commitment and the passion that you are bringing to this project. And they have worked hand in hand with Dig Studio. Raise your hands, Dig. Thank you. And Landscape Structure. Uh, are, is Landscape here? Yes, thank you. 
um, all of the, they have really worked as seamlessly as a team to bring this idea uh, to a reality and, and this vision to life, and we can't thank you enough. We also owe a debt of gratitude to our partners in the city from the Public Works Department, um, and specifically Rohini Saxena. Is, is Rohini, yes, thank you. Rohini, um, couldn't do it without you. Thank you for your ongoing partnership. Uh, and PCL Construction, I saw a bunch of PCL folks here. Thank you so much. Um, these are the folks that are going to make it happen. So part of this group has been dreaming about it and designing it, and the rest of them are going to make sure that it actually comes to life and is built here. And so we can't thank all of you enough. Um, and working behind the scenes, because it's one thing to build, you know, draw these great pictures, but working behind the scenes is a team of people who every day make sure that these parks look great. And it looks great today, doesn't it? And I want to thank uh, our, su our superintendent, Mike McCown uh, of the Northwest uh, District, Richard Olguin, are Mike and Richard here yet? Uh, and their whole team who oversee the maintenance uh, of this park uh, and really treat these parks as though they, they were their own backyards. And then our park rangers, I know you saw some of them when you came in, raise your hands and let's thank them because they're the ones who help facilitate uh, everything that goes on in this park. Our marketing team led by uh, Yolanda Quesada uh, is, is here today. Wave your hands. They help make all of these events happen uh, and we're, we're really appreciative of everything that you do. Uh, and finally, uh, I, wanna, I wanna thank a group of people who, who get overlooked often and are so much a part of every one of these events and that's our facilities, our city facilities staff who come out every time we have an event and set it all up and make sure the music and the microphones are working. So let's say they're great partners as well and thank, thank you. Um, they always play some really good music. You noticed the music when you came in and made it feel like a party and they're going to do that in, in just a little bit again. And now kids, I want you to help me at the, at the top of your voices, at the top of your lungs, let's say one great big Thank you to all these people who have made this happen. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you! Thank you so much. And now it is my great pleasure to bring forward the biggest advocate, maybe behind Nettie. I'm going I'm to put you behind Nettie, Paul. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll see that. Um, but Councilman Paul Lopez, who really was the driving force in bringing this project to this neighborhood and to this park. And so let's hear from uh, Councilman Paul Lopez. There is Paul. Thank you. Um, I, I think, well, one, well, you're welcome. I like, I, I, you know, here, here's, here's the cool thing. So, this is my neighborhood. I live in this neighborhood to the south. Um, I grew up here. And these are our girls, right? This is our park, right? It's always been our park. This is this, this, when we say Denver's parks, that means all of us, right? When we say Denver, it means all of us. And here, here's the thing. I, I um, uh, thank you. And, and I, I wanted, first and foremost, just to, 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 to thank you, um, Madam Manager. This is, uh, I, I've, I've always known Happy as, as, as Councilwoman Happy Haynes uh, for her, her time serving on, on the council. And, and, and she, you're always, uh, you'll always have the, the name, the title honorable. And in this community, um, she's from Denver. She's one of us, right? And that's the cool thing. That's the cool thing about this part coming together is, is, is that it's us. It's a reflection of who we are. When we look in the mirror, we see this park. When this park looks in the mirror, it sees us. Right, and then and I also wanted to uh, uh, just really look. A lot of the a lot of the work happens, but it also fits into a bigger vision, and and we couldn't have more of a champion, or not just in, in, in parks and rec and the men and women in parks and rec, but with our mayor Michael Hancock. Michael has has um, just without hesitation supported our neighborhoods 
supported the projects in our neighborhoods and, and, and just with, with vigor. And, and, and for that, uh, Mayor Hancock, I thank you. I'm absolutely eternally grateful for, for that, right? To have somebody that not only understands the vision, but has lived that vision and lives, lived the life and, and, and is really pushing for that. There's nothing like an advocate that really truly believes it in here. And that's Michael Hancock, right? Um, and the other person I really want to acknowledge is Lee Rains Thomas, who's the principal of Eagleton, right? You have been amazing. She's also a resident of this neighborhood, right? She comes from here. And, and here's the cool thing is that it's, it's one thing for us, you know, kiddos, right? For, it's one thing for us to, to, to design playgrounds, but we kind of do it boring, right? We make them super safe. You can't get hurt. They're not fast enough, right? Uh, but they, when they do it, man, that's what you see. And that's the inspiration. It's their ideas. It's what they want to see. And, and, and uh, you, you've helped really bring that voice to the table. Uh, Gordon has been amazing with this. He's been super supportive of, of what we're doing here. Mr. Martinez as well. Um, Scott Gilmore, I don't know how he got laid up on his back, but we're going to make fun of him. Yeah. Right, for being laid up on his back. Right, a little scene out of Friday maybe. Um, but uh, the other person that I think is not here that we have to give a lot of credit to, the two people is, is, is Susan Shepard, our former city councilwoman in, in the north. This was her district when we, we kind of split. This used to be our boundary. And when this opportunity presented itself and said maybe it wasn't a fit for one part of the city, we said, we'll take it. We'll do it. Yeah, this would be awesome. We know the perfect place for this, right? <laughs> and that happened. Um, and, and her and, and Lori Miller, you know, we, we all put our heads together with Scott Gilmore and said maybe this could happen. And, and that's what happened. And, and, and Happy made it. Happy and the mayor and, and our team, just this is why it's here, right? Um, let me say let me say a, a couple things about Paco Sanchez. Before this park, I bet a lot of folks here did not know who Paco Sanchez was, right? We've always known this to be Paco Sanchez Park, without knowing who Paco Sanchez was. Well, Paco Sanchez, and it's no surprise. So, Paco Sanchez's legacy is that he's a pioneer. He's somebody who came to this country, born in Guanajuato, Jesus, Guadalajara, right? Where music comes from, where Mexican music comes from. And here he was in the 40s in Denver. And when you click on the two, when you click on that radio, you heard everything. You heard all the, all the greats, except us. Despite us living here and calling Denver home and having called this state home for centuries, our music wasn't on the waves. Well, Paco changed that. He made sure that, um, that our music was playing, that our art, our culture was being shared. And guess what? It went, as they say in the radio industry, it went right to the top. It became the number one station. And today, Spanish language uh, stations top the charts, top the listening, the, the, the amount of folks that are listening, the listenership, right? Um, he was a Mexican immigrant. He believed in fighting racism. And like another artist that I know of Bob Marley, he believed that the music was a cure for it. He believed that it brought it together and it brought people together. And it certainly did. It gave us something to be proud of. And not just if you were Mexicano or you're Chicano, but everybody, because guess what? That music is a conglomeration of so many different instruments that we didn't invent. I mean, that accordion that you hear doesn't come from us, that comes from Germany. And when you, when you play these Norteños, when you play these Rancheras, it's not, it's not just something that... Paco Sanchez made sure it's not something you just heard in a restaurant, right? That it is commonplace. And because of that, his fingerprints, he, he became our state rep. Um, he did finally operate out of his home. He became our state rep. His, his fingerprints are all over this place. One thing he cared about was making sure that we had adequate housing. The Good, Amer Good Americans Organization, the uh, Juanita Nolasco Apartments, you look at the, the stuff around here, uh, the Avondales, um, the uh, Westridge. The fact that this is so close to the Westridge housing is, is exactly why we wanted it here. This is who we want it for. These are the most deserving, the hardest working, the folks that say, you know what? We've lived in the shadow of Mile High, we've in the shadow of this park and not seen an ounce from it. It's time that we change that. And that's, that's why that's here. Um, let me just say that the community, if it wasn't for having this meeting at Girls Inc. and the community coming to Girls Inc. and literally in the Girls Inc. gym, and we said, is this something that you want in the community? 
Should we vote on this? Nettie, what happened? You were here that day. <laughs> yeah. 100%. And you know what happened after she said that? <laughs> yeah, I might as well do so. 100%. All those folks in there, Miss Nettie, all those folks in there followed your lead. They say, you know what? All of those hands went up in the air. And that's the kind, and, and since then, it's had that community ownership, and it's the community ownership that we're going to take care of, right? We're going to take care of this park, right? Mm -hmm. right. We're not going to let anybody tag it, right? right. We're not going to let anybody deface it. Right. Why? Because it's whose? It's, it's ours. That's right. And so, with that, I just I just want to say, you know, we're absolutely thankful for that. Um, I, I mentioned her, and I want to bring her up because she says it's better than anybody. Um, this is uh, the legendary. And when we talk about the legendary District 3, when you talk about these legendary parks, it's all because of legendary people. And I say this is the legendary Nettie Moore. So, Nettie, why don't you come up here? And, and Get nice and close, Nettie, to the microphone. Well, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. I'm up here without a piece of paper. So what I'm saying is coming from right here. I, I want to let you know, and I want all you children to know something. You know there's a Nettie Moore playground up the valley up here, this side of Sheridan. And you know what? I would like to see all of you up there sometime playing, and I could go over and, and talk to you. It's a Nettie Moore playground. So, have you been up there at all on Utica Street? <laughs> no? Well, you know what? With that park up there, plus what is being done down here, I want to tell you, this area, we're not, no more, when you talk to people and, and they say, where do you live? And I ask them, well, where do you live? And I hear Green Mountain. Well, you know what? I say, I live in the Lake Good Dry Gulch area. I wouldn't live anywhere else. And I get some kind of frowns. You live there, but let me tell you something. This area here, what it's doing to tie from Federal Boulevard to Sherd Boulevard, what we have gotten done throughout these years, we can stand in proud. And one thing I want to say, when I started with Pena in office, that his thing was, wanted a great city. We got a great city. Webb came along, and guess what? It was the year of the neighborhood. Vote on number one, streets, curbs, gutters. My street got in, developed in, in 2001 with Webb. Then, uh, then Hickenlooper came along, celebrating Denver, 150 years of Denver being Denver. There again, uh, I, got, I was one that was selected to represent one of the 150 years. But I've put my life in here, and when I have to move, which I may have to because my house is, because of building that I can't prove, I may have to move. But you know what? My memories will always be within this neighborhood. And all of you people, I, you know to me, I don't care what people are, whether they're black, white, or whatever else. You know what? We're all God's children, or whatever religion we have, we're one as a whole. And, and working with Michael Hancock uh, and everything, I have to also bring him in because he's been along beside me and everything on issues. When Scott would say, I'm bringing Nettie, be sure and save her a seat. He saved me a seat. Thank you. So, save so, her a seat? Huh? Or save the seat? Save the seat. Oh, they said receipt. <laughs> no, the, the seat. But anyway, I'm glad to talk to you, and I've got six notebooks that, that some of them's in the Denver Public Library archives of what the area was like, what it's become, and, and, and they will be, when I pass away, my will says it goes to my daughter, and from there, go the, they all go to my daughter. When she can't take care of them or anything, they can go to the Denver Public Library, and also uh, next month, when the little streetcar that used to run up and down this area, which is part of my memories, uh, I get to be up there, and I, as far as I know, and show some pictures and speak to people about this streetcar running through the area. So anyway, thanks a lot for having me. I've been thoroughly enjoying it, 
and it's a pleasure to meet all of you, and I'd like to see you children up there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. One of you walk her down to her seat. Help her sit down, help her sit down. Hey. Yep, anybody, go go and help her, yep. That's what we do for our, for our, our states persons in the, in the community. We make sure that they're taken care of. Well, um, and Nettie said it, uh, there's a mayor who stands with us every step of the way. Uh, he stands with these young people especially every step of the way. In this neighborhood and across this city, we couldn't have a better champion uh, than our mayor, Michael B. Hancock, and so please welcome him to the party. Hi guys, how you doing? Good. Give it up for Councilman Paul Lopez. Been a great partner, and to Council uh, Councilwoman Happy Haynes, <laughs> our Parks Director Pat Happy Haynes. Listen, uh, the 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 beauty of following Happy Haynes and following Councilman Lopez, and of course the incomparable uh, Nettie Moore is that everything that needs to be said has been said. I want to just put one stake in the ground and remind everyone that we have done this for the community. And the community has engaged wonderfully well. This is a park for, by, and with the people. And so I congratulate you. The other thing I'm going to say very briefly is to remind folks that we get a chance to finish what we start here today. Uh, in November, we all get to go to the ballot and vote on that general obligation bond where we've included this uh, park and the completion the later phases of this park. So I ask you to join with me and those of us who are going to go vote for Go Denver Bond 2017. Say Go Denver Bond. Go Denver Bond. 2017. 2017. And when we vote yes on those initiatives, we are saying yes to completing this park as well as some other very dynamic projects that are planned for this area. It's our city. Those of us who live here, we get a chance to invest in it. Those of us who care about it, and care about these children, we get, to lay, we get to hand to them a legacy of investment and opportunity. So thank you all for being here. Let's throw some dirt at these people who are over here, and uh, let's get this construction of this park underway. Yay. Come on, guys.